Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at transfer learning and how we can transfer computer vision neural networks that have been developed for us into Keras. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. So let's do some actual transfer learning for computer vision in Keras. I'm going to show you how to make use of the mobile net. We're going to transfer this completely into our Python code and we'll be able to recognize a thousand different image types. We're going to also implement a very, very simple example of how we'll extend this to learn. We're really trying to see if we can just add a few images to it and actually teach it to recognize a couple of different dog breeds. And we'll see that we have some degree of, of success with this. To do this as a real project, we would have to capture quite a few additional images to do this. You'll get a chance to try this out in the assignments to create your own transfer learning for computer vision. We're going to try to create the Microsoft dog breed image search. So this is a, this is a a project that Microsoft probably worked on for some degree of time. We're going to try to do a very, very simple poor man's version of this that recognizes just a couple of dog breeds. But you can basically put in pictures of, of dogs and it will tell you using a convolution, probably a transfer. I don't know if they trained this from scratch or if they use some transfers from existing neural networks. But nonetheless, we'll try to do something somewhat like this. First, before we even try transfer learning, let's just see if we can get MobileNet loaded and actually work. So I'm going to pull in these imports so that we have it. This command here will basically load in ImageNet from Keras so that we can make use of it in mobile net. Let me go ahead and pull this in. Now, if this was the first time that you were running it, you'd see download bars go across and it would download the entire mobile net image net weights for you. This can be a very good way to learn about how to architect neural networks. You can look at the summary for these and it shows you it. And by the way, this include top that I have here, true, that just means load the whole thing. When we go to do transfer learning, we'll say false meaning to shear off the output layers like we did in the previous part, but we'll we'll take the bottom part for feature engineering, but the top part of the network, we're going to put in our own so that we can teach it to classify images that were never in the original image net. So this is what it looks like. You'll notice some things here that are kind of interesting. We're doing fairly small numbers of filters and we tend to get bigger and bigger as we go out. 256, 512, and so on and so forth. You can see that they are using batch normalization extensively. So it can be very interesting to look at these and see how these extremely well-researched libraries of weights that we're transferring, how they've structured their deep neural networks. When you finally get out to here at the very end, you'll see these thousands. That's for the, these are the final output layers that will get removed, but these are what are used to classify those 1000 different images that this thing is designed to deal with. So then let's go ahead and try to see how well it will classify images. Now I grabbed just some URLs here from Google Image Search. These are a variety of different images. I just want to see how well ImageNet can classify it. Feel free to put your own in here and classify those as well. You can load them from files too. Let's go ahead and run this. It should be loading those URLs. It's actually done already. You'll see that first image that I picked. So that first image is a soccer ball and it's literally from Shopify. So I was actually doing Google image search, finding an image and just right clicking copy image URL and putting it into here. So this was actually, I guess, a real soccer ball for sale that I happened upon. But you'll notice that image, the ImageNet train mobile net, is with 99% probability that it believes that is a soccer ball. So it's, it's quite good. It's saying honeycomb is the next one down, but it's pretty uncertain of that. But I could see where it's going with honeycomb. It's similar shape. A dumbbell, no idea, or a balloon, maybe. Wall clock, who even knows? So these are just some of the classifications that it's done. Now you could take your the Python code up there and you could write all kinds of computer vision applications. You wouldn't even have to train the neural network. Just use MobileNet and you'll, you'll have this capability. Here I picked just a random car. It actually identified it as a racer. Definitely not a convertible. Sort of a sports car. It's a, it's a truck. It does recognize that as a pickup truck. It's definitely not an amphibian. If you put that in water, it would sink to the bottom. 
pretty sure. So this, and it's also showing the, the class number. So the class is between zero and 999. So these are the classes that you have. It might be one to 1,000. I'm not totally sure what the indexes are. There's me. I was hoping it would classify me as a person, but oh well, it classifies me as a suit, which I guess is a synonym for a lawyer. I might take some offense to that. It says that I have a Windsor tie. There is no tie on there. It's very difficult to get me to wear a tie. I very rarely wear them. Groom. I was a groom at one point when my wife and I got married, but that was not the day. Definitely not a trench coat. And I don't know why it thinks I'm a cellular telephone. I use them a lot, but I am not a cellular telephone. This is my dog, Hickory. He's a English bulldog, but it's a very close up. So I'm trying to be mean and confuse it. And I do successfully. There are some dog breeds in ImageNet, so it can do some breed identification already, but it's saying that it's a pug or maybe a French bulldog. Wrong country, wrong breed altogether. Definitely not a boxer. Definitely not a bull mastiff. That is one of the biggest dogs that there there is. And I don't even know what this is. So using this and the code Code from up here, you can basically load in this image net and you can start to classify this. Or you could use YOLO if you needed, if you want to look at the previous module that I had on that, where you can learn to actually create something that needs to recognize several things on the screen. So maybe a car and a person and know the actual X and Y that they're located at. But this, you could do a number of things. You could potentially write a robotic dog door that that only opens for whatever it classifies your dog as. That, that'd be a fun project. But this is showing you basically the make square. We had that before. It just just does a Instagram type, make it a make it a portrait. We go through all the URLs and I basically load the URL one by one, convert it into an image, load it. I resize it to the image height and width, which is 224 by 224, anti-aliasing, convert the image to an array, expand the dimensions if necessary, and then I pre-process the image pre-process input that's provided by Keras to help you pre-process your image. And then I'm ready to generate the predictions. Here, I essentially then print out the number, which is the argmax. And I also get the decode predictions function that was provided by Keras. And this lets me print out this nice list of the probabilities. So this could be a starting point for all kinds of applications that you might, you might want to create. But let's try to do actual transfer learning. So here, I am going to load the same thing again, but include top is going to be false. I load it and I print out the summary. You'll see that those 1000 layers at the bottom are not there. We stop right at the 1024s. So it's just like the one that we saw earlier in this part, but we're stopping early. Not everything is still trainable. We'll mark those as non-trainable in a moment. Here we add on the additional layers. So I am going to add on two dense layers of 1024, just kind of continuing there. These will be trainable. All the stuff that you see up here will not be trainable. And then I put a soft max on here because we're going to basically add three different types of dog. Here I actually build the model. And here I mark the first 20 as trainable false, the last as completely trainable. Now Keras has some really nice capabilities to let you train from folders. Here I am going to train this according to this, this folder. Now the structure that you put this into becomes very important. So this is user jheaton downloads trans. So that's just where I happen to put it in there. So trans for transfer learning. Let me show you that folder. So this is the folder I have set up. You'll see I have class A, B, and C. Those are my three types of dog. I do not have a huge training set here. So class A, these are all bulldog type animals. And then class B, these are poodles. Class C, these are German shepherds. So this is how you would set it up. You, just to label these, you have your images here. They can be JPEGs and PNGs. And you name the folders so that the, the common classes are grouped together. That gives you your Ys, the folder names, and then the actual files go into each of the folders. What you actually name these files doesn't matter. And I simply point it to here. This tells it the target size, so it's gonna scale all of those as need be to 224. We're trying to classify them as categorical, so we want the three classes. And we go ahead and run this. Found nine images belonging to three classes. Now, if you wanna train this, you'll have to go in and pull in your own images and create that directory structure. Some of those images are potentially copyrighted, so I can't really create a, a collection of those. 
But you may also not want to do dog breeds as well, and you'd probably want to grab quite a few additional images. Uh, you'd ideally want maybe 50 to 100 in each of the classes, but that's just a, a stab at it. Now I'm going to train it. This will go pretty quick, actually. I'm only training it for five epochs. I could certainly do more, and that might give us better, better accuracy. I'll go ahead and fast forward this until it's done. And now we're done. So let's go ahead. I put in different URLs for different dogs that were not in the training set. So let's see how well it actually does. Again, this is mainly going through the motions. You'd want quite a few additional images if you were going to do this for real. Right, there's a German Shepherd. It's saying it class two. Here's another German Shepherd, also class two. Now here's a Bulldog. If this is class two, that's an epic fail. So it is thinking that this Bulldog is pretty similar to these German Shepherds. It's probably from not training it quite enough. This Bulldog, my Bulldog, is saying that that's something different entirely. And then the Poodles are also classifying as two. So you probably need more images, but this is just really taking you through the motions for this so that you you, you can build this potentially for any types of images that you want. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to continue with transfer learning and see about some human language libraries or neural networks that can be transferred into Kira's for our use. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.